Good evening. You can find several novels online called Are We Nearly There Yet? It's, it is the title of many a nativity play. And there is even a book of nativity songs called Off to Bethlehem, which covers the theme as well. More commonly, we recognise this as a question from children or restless adults on a journey for which they have no patient understanding or of the traffic or the distance involved. Two weeks ago, I led a carol service for deaf people in Marble Arch and I had loads of bags full of print pies, PowerPoint projector, computer and so forth. I was very heavy. I enlisted the help of my husband and another lady who agreed to meet us at the station. Unfortunately, the day before the carol service, the lady fell and was unable to help her. It betrayed me and my husband. We got to Bond Street and we found that the station at Marble Arch was closed. We were informed that it was just a five minute walk. But with our bags and the crowd, it took us at least 15 minutes. I used my Google map and managed to lose my husband in the process. I did find him again. But there were several times on that short journey when we both said, are we nearly there yet? Theoretically, in my mind, by the time we get to Christmas Eve, I imagine that Mary and Joseph have arrived in Bethlehem and are settled in the stable for the night, thinking that their journey was over and that they could rest. Little did they know their journey was not finished and there was more to come. For Joseph, the decree issued by Caesar Augustus to return to Bethlehem to register must have produced an awful dilemma. He was compelled to go to Bethlehem because he was a descendant of the King David and had family in Bethlehem. The reason he had to register there was so he could pay tax to the Romans. Not the most attractive of reasons, but Joe had no choice in the matter, even though it would mean he would not be able to work for a few weeks and then he wouldn't get paid. Then there was Mary, leaving his pregnant fiance to face opposition and disapproval from her family, her community, as well as others, on her own, simply wasn't an option. All in all, I don't think it was a journey he wanted to take. The journey was a risk in itself. The length of the journey was about mm, 90 miles or so. The terrain was not flat and involved a number of hilly treks to which they had to take slowly on account of Mary's condition, which meant that they averaged something like 10 miles a day. I don't suppose travelling on a donkey was the most comfortable of the seats for Mary. They were travelling through a land with the risk of bandits, with wild animals. Then there was weather to contend with and they had to make sure they took sufficient food and drink for the journey. None of these service stations in the middle of the desert or a drive through McDonald's on, on their journey. I am sure that the refrain, are we nearly there yet, was a regular one repeated several times by both Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph knew that their destination was Bethlehem, and they knew that the aim was to register, but they probably didn't know what they were going to find when they got there. There was none of this advertising stuff we find on the web nowadays, with links where you can browse hotel rooms, and see the area online before leaving. The journey this couple had to take was arduous, full of risk, and yet, to Bethlehem, they went. When we 
go on a journey nowadays, we usually know the exact destination. Booking can be made online and maps are referred to. For the actual journey, the numbers, the street name and the postcode can all be put into Google Maps. If you are confident that it will lead you to your exact destination, you can relax. Mary and Joseph had none of this. Lazarus was a small hill town on a caravan route and so likely a trade route. It was a case of take that route to Bethlehem and chance it when they got there that there was somewhere to stay. But they probably didn't know what they were going to find when they got there. As Jewish people, they had expectations they would be able to stay with family members or at least a Jewish household. An inn would have attracted outsiders, Gentiles, with whom they could not mix. And then there was the issue of non-kosher food. See Acts 10 and Leviticus 11 if you want more information. No. Stay with a Jewish family in their guest room or upper room, as it would have been known, was the way to go. Sadly, for Mary and Joseph, this did not materialise. And they ended up in either an isolated stable or under someone's house with the animals. I wonder if this met their expectations. When I think of people who have made risky and arduous journeys over this year, naturally the refugees attempting the perilous journeys to cross the channel brings to mind. Some make it, some sadly don't. Their destination is to make it to England. I wonder what their expectations are and what compelled them to make that journey. Was it simply because they could not continue living in their own birth countries for whatever reason? I imagine their immediate hopes on arriving are probably to find somewhere safe, somewhere warm to sleep, some food, possibly a shower and fresh change of clothes. Like Mary and Joseph, who felt they couldn't stay in an inn. Do the refugees struggle with our food, our daily routine, our accommodation and religion? Do the refugees find what they're looking for? I hope so. Meeting people in these Covid times has challenged us as to what our expectations are when we meet people. We have come to realise that a handshake, a hug, some form of physical contact has become a basic need. We are constantly reminded to stay two metres apart from others not to hug or be in close contact with those outside our bubble. This pains us and we find it incredibly difficult, particularly when a hug says more than a thousand words, especially to those who are ill or who cannot communicate. Meeting Jesus, we have none of these worries. Our relationship with him is without restriction. His love for us and desire to be in a relationship with us is more than we can imagine. Naomi and Joseph's journey turned out very differently from what they expected. Firstly, the arrival of Jesus, perhaps expected, perhaps not expected yet. Giving birth with animals around them, perhaps expected, but I think not. Visits from the shepherds, definitely not expected. Wealthy visitors with lavish gifts, not expected in the slightest. But that journey made by different people from different backgrounds culminated with a meeting with the baby children. Saviour of the world, God incarnate, Emmanuel. Boy, what a meeting. What a way to finish the first journey of Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the wise men who have all come to see the Christ child in whom all their hopes were placed, who will grow, live and teach and then die on the cross so that we might be forgiven and have life and be able to continue our own journey. Mary and Joseph journeyed to Bethlehem. 
the shepherd journeyed to see the newborn king. The Magi followed a star and went the wrong way, but eventually arrived at their destination. There were hundreds of journeys made in the Bible by different people. Not all these journeys were by choice. Some knew where they were headed, others didn't. Which brings me to the point. Do you know where you're going? And what does your journey involve? People go on pilgrimages to Santiago de Compostela or Lourdes. Sometimes to connect with God. Sometimes to find themselves or just take time out. But seriously, a journey to find God doesn't mean you have to pack your cases and start walking. Isaiah 9 it says that the people are walking, journeying in darkness have seen great light. The Jewish people were walking in darkness. Their troubles were political. The Romans were ruling and they were oppressed. They were pinning their hopes on a Messiah coming to save them in the military sense. What is the darkness on your journey? Are you pinning your hopes on something that may or may not help? Isaiah 9 also tells us that unto us a child is born, a son is given. It's an amazing prophecy which is fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ and it gives us hope. God started his human journey in the birth of Jesus, which enables us to say that he is fully God and fully man, and therefore he understands our humanity. Not like some king sat in a distant castle, apart from his subjects, but the government will be on his shoulders. In other words, Jesus will govern us. I don't know if you have watched Strictly. I have been following the progress of Rose Eiling Ellis, the death actress from EastEnders, and I have been willing her on. Not only because she is deaf like me, but because when she dances, she radiates pure joy. The journey cannot have been easy, but she kept going. Her light at the end was a glittering trophy, but in years to come, that will become a distant memory. Like the June, we might be looking for solutions to our current predicament. A Mary and Joseph who were struggling to find somewhere safe to stay, but latching on to things that we think we need or want. But God's answer to our problems, whether short or long term, lies in the birth of a child, his death and his resurrection. Have you arrived yet? Have you met Jesus? Maybe it's the journey you started but abandoned halfway, or have got stuck somewhere having a long comfort break. I want to encourage you that it's a journey worth starting or restarting. Like Mary and Joseph, travelling by foot and on a donkey, it may not be the most comfortable journey as we sift through our ideas, our feelings, our emotions. But meeting Jesus, God's gift to the world, will be beyond all your expectations. Of course, the journey doesn't stop when you meet Jesus and it's a starting point for loads of other journeys that he calls us to go on. But meeting Jesus is that first destination. Are you nearly there? Have you arrived yet? Or is there something holding you back? Take that first step. No need to pack clothes, a picnic, put petrol in the car or locate a donkey. Start walking and making that journey to be closer to Jesus. It may be through reading stories in the Bible, joining a Bible study group, going to church, having conversations with people. But whatever you do, don't worry about booking, Christmas presents, dinner, the perfect Christmas tree. Just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus until you encounter him in your heart and then you can say I have arrived Hallelujah Amen